Good morning, church. So glad you're joining me again today. So glad you're continuing on with me in this series, The Prayers of Jesus. Last week, we looked at the most famous prayer of Jesus, the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that Jesus uh, shared with his disciples and taught them how they ought to pray, and in turn, taught all of us how we ought to pray. The prayer that has seven petitions uh, of God. And I don't know about you, but this past week, every day, I have prayed through the Lord's Prayer. I've prayed it out of memory, and I trust and, and pray that you're memorizing this simple prayer. But I also slowed down and prayed that prayer, understanding each of those seven petitions. And again, like Jesus, asking God to move through these seven petitions. And I have been amazed at how God has done that this past week for me. And I pray that you have experienced similar in your life. And if you haven't been praying that prayer, let me encourage you, you can start today. Pray that prayer, a simple prayer, the Lord's Prayer. Uh, we'll close today with it. But pray that prayer today and every day into this new week. Because I'm telling you, you'll be amazed as well. God will move through this powerful prayer. Today, we're looking at another prayer that we don't have to memorize and pray specifically, but we need to understand the significance of this prayer that Jesus prayed. We need to understand what Jesus is saying to his audience then and in turn to us today. We find Jesus praying this prayer, standing outside of the tomb, a cave, where his dear friend Lazarus has been buried. We know, Scripture tells us, that Jesus was, was out doing the work that God had called him to when he got word that Lazarus was sick. But Jesus couldn't leave the work God had called him to, so he stayed another couple days finishing up what the task that was before him. Then he made his way to the home of Lazarus in Bethany. And it's on his way to Bethany when he gets word that Lazarus has died. And it's on his way to Bethany when Lazarus' sister Martha comes running out to meet Jesus. And she is clearly upset at the loss of her brother. And she says to Jesus, if only you would have been here, you could have healed him. And Jesus assures her, listen, God's got this. Lazarus will be raised from the dead, trust me. And then Martha goes back and tells Mary, hey, Jesus is almost here. Mary runs out and meets Jesus before he gets to the tomb and says the same thing that Martha said, again, clearly upset at the loss of her brother. She says, if only you had been here you could have done something. You could have healed him. And my brother would still be alive. And, and Jesus sees Mary upset. He just had the same encounter with Martha, who was clearly upset. He's looking around and sees a community that had by now gathered around these sisters because this family meant so much to their community. Lazarus was, was of great importance. He was valued in his community. And so Jesus looks around and he's moved by all of these people that have gathered because of Lazarus's life. And here comes probably the verse, the first verse we all memorize as kids, right? We needed to have this one memorized so when our Sunday school teacher called on us to share a passage of scripture that is meaningful to us or that, you know, that we have memorized, we all went to John eleven thirty five. Jesus wept. <laughs> but he did. He wept because he was moved by everyone else's emotion and he was moved by what is you know the significance of Lazarus's life to to his community it's just been a reminder just kind of reading through that like man I I hope that in my absence one day and in your absence one day that that people are moved because of our significance and our impact that we make in our homes and in our communities but I digress now we find Jesus at the standing at the outside of this cave at the tomb of Lazarus. There's a large stone that's been rolled in, in front of this the cave entrance. And Jesus uh, asks the stone to be rolled away. And Martha objects because Lazarus has been dead for four days. And clearly he's, you know, there's going to be an odor that is just not fit for this crowd. So are you sure you want to do that? And Jesus insists, and that's where we find Jesus praying this, this very short prayer found in John chapter 11, verse 41 and 42. So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. 
I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. That's it. That's a simple prayer. It's not a prayer that he's asked us to pray specifically, but it's a prayer that he asks us to understand. So when we pray, we recognize these two simple truths. Number one, when we pray, God hears us. Jesus thanks God for that. Thank you for hearing me. I knew this. I knew this before I prayed that you always hear me. But I'm saying that as a reminder to everyone around me that you hear them as well. So thank you. And when we pray, we ought to thank God for hearing us. God cares. He's listening. But secondly, Jesus says, I prayed that prayer as a demonstration that you sent me. Because the words I share are powerful. And I want this crowd to understand that second truth is that just like you hear them when they pray, they need to be thankful as well and listening so that they can hear from you too. Because you sent me, so I am an extension of you. And just like you hear us, we need to hear from you. And Jesus demonstrated that with this next move. He literally raised Lazarus from the dead. He didn't walk into that tomb and say, you know, lay hands on Lazarus. He didn't ask the sisters to go uh, and, and demonstrate their faith like he has had previously when people needed healing. Right? I mean, he didn't spit into some dirt and tell the sisters to go rub this paste on Lazarus's body. He didn't ask the crowd to get Lazarus's body and carry his dead body to, you know, the river and dip him into the water so many times. No, Jesus raised Lazarus by simply speaking. Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus was raised from the dead and literally walked out of that tomb because he heard the voice of God through his friend Jesus who is the Son of God an extension of God himself Lazarus heard God's voice and that was enough and it raised him from the dead see God's voice is significant Jesus said just a chapter Prior to that, Jesus shares with his disciples and, and with the Pharisees that had gathered around. He says this, that the shepherd, or the sheep rather, listen to the voice of the shepherd. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he has brought out all of his own, he goes on ahead of them. And his sheep follow him because they know his voice. See, we need to, in our prayer time, thank God for hearing us. But let's not spend all of our time talking. But Jesus demonstrates in a simple prayer that we also need to thank God for speaking to us. And we need to maybe shut up for a minute or slow down and open our ears to hearing the voice of God. Because literally... God's voice brings life. See, there was an exchange that Jesus had with Martha earlier on the road. And when she questioned uh, why he didn't come sooner and he could have made a difference, and he said that Lazarus will be raised from the dead, she says, I get that. I know that. I affirm that, Jesus. You know me. I am a devout Jew as well. I recognize that God will raise us all from the dead one day. Jesus said, I'm not talking about one day. I'm talking about today. Because, and he says these famous words, I am the resurrection and life. I am the resurrection and the life. See, a lot of us get hung up on the fact that Jesus is the resurrection. <laughs> and we too, like Martha, are, are just biding our time and waiting until that day when either Christ returns while we're still living and we get called heavenward, or we're waiting for that time to come when we too will pass away like Lazarus. And one day, God will send Christ back and we will be raised from the dead. That is true. Jesus affirmed that. I am the resurrection. But he also said to Martha, I'm also the life. 
And I pray this prayer to demonstrate to the people that I am the life. And at the sound of my voice comes life. And so our reminder today for us is, yes, God is listening. God hears us. He understands what you're going through and your struggles. He understands the, every, you know, the ups and downs and the pitfalls of life. And God hears you when you pray. And be thankful for that. But I want us to, in our prayer time, do a better job of listening. See, Jesus prayed a prayer that we might hear. And the significance of hearing is that we can have life. And I think for many of us, we are so consumed today in the tragedy that is our life and all that's going on around us that most of our prayer time is praying for us the way we see fit. Praying that God would deliver us from these circumstances that we find ourselves in. And I believe that God is wanting us to stop for a minute and to listen so that he can speak. So that we can hear the words of his son, our Savior Jesus, and we can have life. That's been my prayer for sure during these uncertain times that we're in right now. I've been saying that for several weeks now, like, where are the Christians speaking life? Man, I'm hearing from even pastors, and it sickens me when, when we get on uh, this all of our social media platforms, and, and it's just a lot of doom and gloom and, and fear-mongering, really, and, and I'm not hearing life. I'm not hearing the words of Jesus that should bring hope and should bring peace and should should bring love and should extend grace and mercy. All of these life-giving things because Jesus is more than just the resurrection one day. Jesus is the life today, the here and the now. And our prayers are significant because it's an opportunity where we can communicate with God. Not one-sided, but it's speaking and listening. So that's my prayer for you, it's my prayer for myself, and I pray that you pray that same for me as well, that we will hear God when we pray. And when we spend that time listening, like I asked you to do last week, praying through the Lord's Prayer, as you're praying these petitions, hopefully you're listening. Hopefully you're watching God reveal throughout your day new truths to you, reveal himself to you. God, throughout your day, because you are obedient in your prayer time of listening, God brings life into your home. God brings life back into your community. God brings life back into the church, regardless of where we meet, how we meet, and when we meet. God can bring life. That's his plan. That's what Jesus demonstrated in this prayer. And that's my prayer. For each and every one of us today. So you join me in listening this week as we are faithful to continue to pray the Lord's Prayer, as we're faithful to just spend that time quietly, open to God to move in and through us. Let me pray for you as Jesus instructed us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.